Hello and a very warm welcome to our act of worship, commemorating the fallen in two world wars and subsequent conflicts. I'm here at the War Memorial in St Paul's Churchyard and in this year of coronavirus I'll be paying special attention to those who cared for the wounded and the dying. First, let us pray. We have gathered around this memorial today to remember all those from this community who were caught up in the courageous but tragic events of world war. We remember those who were killed in action or by disease, the bereaved, the lost, the families which were shattered, the wounded, maimed and injured, those who held in silence unspeakable memories of warfare. As we remember those who fought and those who remain anxiously at home in this community, let us pray that God will heal all memories, speak a word of peace and bring us his healing. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. These are the names of the First World War soldiers from this community who died on the battlefield. John Challoner, Charles Dale, Frederick Dale, Harry Duffield, Henry Edwards, George Evans, Charles Gilchrist, Vernon Hooley, Walter Hughes, John Rose, Harry Swain, Albert Taylor, Frank Warrington. Earlier, members of the St Paul's uniformed groups laid a wreath and some specially painted stones. Let us keep silence to remember those who gave their lives in the service of their country. There shall not grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Let us now commit ourselves to peace. Let us pledge ourselves today to live as good neighbours, 
to honour the past, to care for all who are in need, and to live at peace amongst ourselves and with all people. Lord God, Father of all, we pledge ourselves to serve you and this neighbourhood, to bring relief to all who are in need, and comfort the sad, lonely and distressed. Keep us ever mindful of the struggles and achievements of former generations, and of this place where we make our home, now and in the days to come. Amen. Strengthen our hearts and hands and minds, O Lord, to work together for peace, to see you in one another, and to seek your kingdom above all things, that your will may be seen to be done and your kingdom come, through Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Amen. As we ask that God's will may be done in this and every place, so we pray together as Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I said earlier that I would be paying particular attention to those who looked after the wounded and the dying. So I invite you now to come home with me, where I've got something rather special to show you. So here I am at home, and my wife Virginia has something of great historical interest with relevance to those who looked after the wounded and the dying in the First World War. So what have you got there, Virginia? I've got a thank you book of drawings, poems, cartoons and signatures compiled by soldiers my grandmother, Mildred Boswell, looked after when she was a nurse in a Red Cross hospital in Rouen in 1915. So did you know your grandmother when you were a child? I knew her when she was in her 70s and she moved from her flat in London to live in a nursing home quite near where we lived and she used to come for lunch every Sunday. And did she ever give you any uh, hint of her past as a nurse? Did she tell you stories from that time? Well, I knew she'd been a nurse, but I didn't have uh, any reason to believe she'd been a nurse out in France. And so this book was quite a surprise to my sister and I when we were going through mm. the family archive mm. after my parents' mm. death. Mm. And. Did she tell you any stories of the time when you... Uh, do you remember any family stories about her? Uh, she didn't talk about the war, no. Uh, I'm not sure that many people did. No. But um, the family story was that she was very determined to become a nurse and, rather against her father's wishes, she defiantly left home in Norwich to go to London to train as a nurse in University College hospital in, and uh, that's where she met my grandfather. One of the things that strikes me very strongly about this is the nature of the tributes which are um, quite comic and I think there are some other drawings here of, um, oh here's a, a, a soldier, uh, looks like a, a perhaps a captain or a lieutenant. Well, what does it say down the side there? It says, presumably his caption, it's all jolly fine. I go into number two hospital with a broken arm and after two weeks come out cured, but with a broken heart. It isn't fair. So your grandmother was clearly quite a romantic presence, but um, the humour is something that I think comes through very, very strongly from the soldiers. And we can imagine how uh, that humour must have been um, something that uh, really kept the, uh, the spirit alive in what must have been really difficult circumstances. Have you got any examples of some of the humorous um, contributions? Several references to stockings. Little bits of stocking, 
little bits of lace make the drear old wardroom quite a happy place. <laughs> Her stockings, they were yellow because, she said and laughed, you know how every fellow worships the golden calf. So we can imagine uh, that the humour helps to remind us of the courage and of the human spirit in the very worst of circumstances. It also perhaps reminds us that in the kindness and the compassion and the service given by the nurses and medical staff, God was at work, bringing hope to those who felt hopeless and helpless. Precious documents such as these help us to keep the lived experience of those who suffered alive in our memories, and perhaps they teach us to value and respect those who do the same for us today. May God bless you as you hold in mind today the suffering of others. Amen.